We all know what happened on 8th of November 2016 when rupees 500 and 1000 rupee notes were demonetized. I thought it was a way of converting black money into white money by this demonetization because firstly 86% of the currency was demonetized and 98% of that currency became white money. The tale of Vivek Narayan Sharma versus Union of India is a must read. It is popularly known as the demonetization case. I'm happy that I got a chance to be on that bench. We all know what happened on 8th of November 2016 when rupees 500 and 1000 rupee notes were demonetized. The interesting aspect is that in the Indian economy of that time, and more so even now, 500 rupees and 1000 rupee notes com comprised of 86% of the currency. If you see from the common man's point of view, one rupee, the note one rupee is issued by the central government. Two rupees, five rupees, 10 rupees, 20 rupees, 50 rupees, 100 rupees are the other currency notes which are issued by the Reserve Bank of India. But 86% of the currency was 500 rupees and 1000 rupee notes, which I thought the central government lost sight of while demonetizing 86% of the currency. Imagine a laborer who went to work those days, who was given a 500 rupee note or a 1000 rupee note at the end of the day. He had to go and get that note exchanged before he could go to the grocer shop to buy the daily essentials. And the other aspect is 98% of the demonetized currency came back to the Reserve Bank. So where were we heading towards what is called the black money eradication? I thought it was a way of converting black money into white money by this demonetization because firstly 86% of the currency was demonetized and 98% of that currency became white money. All the unaccounted money went back to the bank. Therefore, I thought it was a good way of getting uh, unaccounted cash accounted thereafter. But what has happened after that with regard to the income tax proceedings, etc., we don't know. And therefore, this common man's predicament really stirred me. And therefore, I had to dissent more of that from the panelists I don't like to go on speaking about it but there were two aspects one is on section 26 2 of the RBI Act whether the central government could use that provision to demonetize currency while upholding the power of the central government to demonetize currency as opposed to a recommendation being made by the RBI to the central government to demonetize it I however held that the manner in which it was done was not correct and there was no decision making process which was in accordance with law the arbitrariness of it the non-exercise of discretion the consultative process being absent the haste with which it was done i'm not sure some people say that even the finance minister of the day did not know about it this is only what I hear, nobody knows about it. But the communication went on one evening and the demonetization happened on the next evening. If really India wanted to go from paper currency to plastic currency, surely demonetization of currency was not also a reason for that, I thought. More of that in the discussions. A day after Vivek Narayan was Kaushal Kishore on the very next day, the reason for these consecutive days was because Justice Nazir, who was heading the bench, was retiring and therefore we had to pronounce these cases immediately after, uh, uh, after the winter vacation. Again, there, uh, by a majority of four is to one, the, I had to strike a different note because I was of the opinion that 
common law remedies were already available and therefore to bring in this concept of constitutional tort and the other of horizontality except where it was expressly stated in the constitution was not necessary.